I have a hard act to follow because we had a very informative um, session here a couple of days ago on weight control. So really in the words of Monty Python, uh, I have to provide you now with something completely different. So that is a tall order. But in essence, uh, let me start by morning depression and tell you that there is not a drug, there is not a supplement, and there is not a diet in the history of medicine that has induced sustained weight control. That said, we have an inkling from relatively recent therapeutic studies that a holistic or comprehensive approach to weight control can result in the outcome we require. But the notion of merely changing the dietary intake of a nation is a monumental task that we probably may never achieve. In essence, weight control has to be seen uh, with respect to the laws of thermodynamics. And anybody who thinks calories do not count, please join me in the Flat Earth Society. Obviously, the laws of thermodynamics imply that we need energy expenditure. And our modern lifestyle is characterized by our idleness. We don't walk, we don't move. So many of us are dealing with energy requirements for merely basal metabolic rate. Increasingly, we understand the importance of socio-behavioral interventions, where we can have tremendous complex dis discussions about the control of appetite or the apistat. We can talk about uh, issues such as hypothalamic controls. Um, we can talk about extremely complex science, but we have a prevailing social gluttony where the reward of eating outweighs um, any signals that we provide ourselves often to stop eating. So the notion of social socio-behavioral interventions is, ver is very important. And if you look at registries of people who have sustained weight control, then they do it by means most often other than diet. And it really is a behavioral change, uh, which requires resolution and commitment, sometimes for a lifetime. Now, we throw around the notion of detoxify detoxifying the body um, the question is detoxifying it of what? We do not have effective detoxification methodology. Uh, sorry to be secondarily depressing, but we're kind of fooling ourselves if we think that we're able to release or remove uh, organochemicals that are stored in our fat deposits. Um, we may certainly uh, have an approach to heavy metals with intravenous chelation, of which I personally am very supportive. But please pause and wonder if all of this magic you hear about detoxification is really effective. And we'll address that issue uh, with some clinical examples. Now, we have a veritable epidemic of sleeplessness and we know a great deal about the obtrusive consequences of sleeplessness, such as poor psychomotor function, drowsiness. And we have some evidence that, in fact, sleeplessness is really contributing greatly to uh, economic burdens of loss of work, road traffic accidents, etc. But we do not focus on the less obtrusive consequences of sleeplessness, which include progression to or towards insulin resistance. Uh, they include progression towards hormonal profiles, uh, certainly involving estrogen, where there may be an increased risk of breast cancer as a consequence of sleep deprivation. So we have a number of unobtrusive uh, complications of sleeplessness, 
And perhaps the commonest is actually the side effect of sleeping tablets. Now we talk about stress management, but stress is good uh, in some respects. Hormetic or hormesis is a degree of stress that we require in order that we can live. But we are obviously an overstressed society, and again this reverses is into the socio-behavioral management of obesity. So the solution to the obesity crisis is not the modern found prescription of HCG, whether or not that intervention actually works. But here at the bottom of the list is something that we should feel somewhat ashamed about, which is really the high prevalence of insulin resistance, which is the hallmark of metabolic syndrome X. And we have 70 million Americans with metabolic syndrome, but that diagnosis is an uncommon diagnosis in medical charts. So against this background, uh, let me try and be a little more positive uh, about where we are. Well, this is the phenomenon of diabesity, and in my mind, this is a direct causal relationship. And in fact, if you pause and look at this illustration from Time magazine, not from a medical journal, the data are horrifying. In an eight-year period, we had uh, an average increase in our weight of the order of what appears to be a few pounds. But look at the percentage of the population that increased with type 2 diabetes. So in essence, we have clearly here the notion of diabe diabesity, and the forerunner to this problem largely is metabolic syndrome X. And we can explain that progression at least in simplistic terms. Now, let me focus upon something that's really quite important, and that is, oh, my waistline, no more cake. Essentially, this is the hallmark of upper, ab upper body obesity, which of course is really associated with most of the risk factors of disease. 